I was recently doing some tests on creating waterfalls in Blender and I thought I'd share my findings with you. So this is a quick tutorial aimed at intermediates, but I try and make it as beginner friendly as possible. Eventually I'm hoping to make this a much bigger scene with lots of waterfalls and a big castle and things like that. So watch out for a breakdown of that in the future. Also, if you want to download the file, you can download it for free. It's got all the trees and things like that as well if you want those. I've got links to that and my website and other useful links in the description. So the first thing I want to do is go to a site that offers free videos. Pexels is great. These are copyright free videos, so you can use them in your projects. I've typed in waterfall. If you type in waterfall and then choose videos just here, there's lots to choose from. Now, what we can't have is any camera movement unless you want to do some camera tracking. So shots like this won't work. I use this one for the final scene and you can see the camera still. And what we're looking to do is kind of cut out this section of video. And this is from Spencer Campbell. So thank you very much to them. Another one that I've used and I'll use for this tutorial is from Wayne Speedy. This is quite a nice one again, nice still camera. And ideally what we're looking for is a very dark background behind the waterfall. That seems fairly common because the rocks kind of have that dark color behind them, but it really helps the darker you get. So in Blender now, I'll just delete everything. So select it all and press delete. And it helps greatly if you have an add-on called images as planes. It comes with Blender, but you just have to enable it. So up to edit and then preferences under add-ons, type in image and there's import images as planes. Just make sure that's ticked and close this down. Now I can press shift A to add and under image, we have images as planes. And then I've got to find my waterfall. So you can see I've got a few here and I've tested most of them. This one was quite a fun one and you can make it go over some rocks and things. This is the one I used in the actual production. And we'll test out this one, which I was talking about earlier. So tick that, import images planes, and let's zoom in on that. We can't see anything at the moment, but if I go across to EV, we can see our image there. So I'll need to rotate around the x-axis Rx 90 degrees. So it's upright like this. Now let's go across to the shading workspace so we can see what's going on with the nodes. I'll zoom in on our footage again and I'll just make the shader editor a bit bigger and zoom out just a touch. So this is the image that it brings in into the principal BSDF and of course into the material output. Now what Images Planes does, it plugs in the color to the color naturally and it plugs the alpha into an alpha in case you've got an alpha channel. We haven't got an alpha channel for this image. We're going to do it in a slightly different way. The other great thing about the add-on is that it puts the amount of frames in for us. So if I just bring out a new window here and change it to the timeline, press play, and we can see our footage playing. So I'll talk more about this in a second, but let's go back to layout view so I can see my image a bit clearer. And I want to kind of focus my area just here. If I go into edit mode and I try and select one of the vertices and press G to grab, it stretches the image. However, if I press GG, so tap G twice, I can edge slide and that retains the UV information. So it's a nice easy way to do it. So GG to edge slide and just select these, GG and edge slide and GG and edge slide back again. This one over here, GG, and just slowly bring them in. Now, if you go too far in and you want the whole of the waterfall there, I can press GG and then C to turn off the clamping and I can go back over this way a bit. So GG to bring it down here, GG to bring it down here, and we'll cut off the top about there. Okay, so this is what we're left with. Just gotta be a bit careful of these bright spots here because the way we're going to take out the background is by taking out any dark spots in the image. So ideally, if I press GG to get rid of that one, I could actually do a loop cut here as well. So Control R to do a loop cut and then GG to bring that down. So we just got these white bits here, maybe just that top there as well. So I'm left with just the waterfall. Now let's go back to the shading workspace and I'll come out of edit mode and zoom in on my lovely waterfall there. And I mentioned earlier, we've got the alpha channel plugged into the alpha, but it's got no alpha channel. So we can take that off. And instead what we need to do is plug the color into the alpha. And instantly that actually kind of works. I can go back to the beginning, press play, and we've got a relatively okay waterfall. And if you put some rocks in the background, that will work okay. We can adjust this slightly though, if I press shift A to add, go to converter and color ramp, bring that in there. So what the alpha is doing, it's looking for black and white information and the black it will make transparent and the white it will keep. That's why footage of waterfalls kind of works. So I can come into my color ramp and I can just play with this a little bit and see how much I want to keep of certain areas and how much I want to try and get rid of. That looks pretty good. Press play and I've got my waterfall. I can then go into edit mode. Let's pause the playback for now. Control R do a few loop cuts and select the top there 
and pull that backwards so it's kind of going over a ledge. Maybe select this line of edges here with Alt left click and Control B to bevel those. So it kind of curves around like this and you can kind of make it go over a ledge, which works reasonably well. The only problem is if you want to go right around to the side here, you start losing that effect a bit because obviously it's a flat plane. So that's how I made the waterfall. If you want to learn about how I made the kind of splashy bits at the bottom, then it's best to download the file and just check out the nodes that I've used there. So hopefully this has given you some insight into how to create waterfalls and the shader editor with how to use transparencies. If you've got any questions, then do comment below. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.